As you think about your transition to the cloud with your enterprise software deployments, it's important to understand some of the strengths and weaknesses and pros and cons and risks of migrating to the cloud. That's exactly what I want to talk about here today. My name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO of Third Stage Consulting. We're an independent consulting firm that helps clients throughout the world reach the third stage of success with their digital transformation journeys. And when we work with clients, most of them are at least considering the cloud. And a majority of that subset is actually making the decision to move to the cloud. And while this is generally where the industry is headed, both in terms of the products that software vendors are developing and where the market is headed, there are a number of risks and downsides and dark sides of migrating to the cloud and a number of pitfalls that you need to be aware of. But a lot of organizations aren't familiar with what those risks or pitfalls are. Now, the reason that so many organizations are moving to the cloud is because there's a number of benefits. First of all, the software vendors are investing very heavily in R&D for the cloud offerings. So if you're looking for more advanced cutting edge solutions over time, you're only gonna be able to find that in the cloud. Secondly, it can be easier to deploy technology from a technical perspective in terms of not having to manage the infrastructure and the internal maintenance of the software with cloud solutions. Those are just a couple examples of the strengths of the cloud, but at the same time you have these strengths, there are also some weaknesses and there's some risks with cloud solutions that we didn't have before the cloud existed. So what I want to do today is talk about what some of the pitfalls and risks are of cloud migrations and talk about the strategies that we've seen work best for organizations as part of their cloud migration strategies. One of the biggest weaknesses of cloud deployments that we commonly see has less to do with any sort of weakness with the cloud solutions themselves, but organizational lack of adoption of the capabilities of cloud solutions. So in other words, a lot of organizations are rushing into the cloud and as a result of rushing into the cloud, they're not taking full advantage of the capabilities that those cloud offerings can provide. So for example, cloud solutions offer quite a bit in the way of machine learning, artificial intelligence, robotic process automation, integration of internet of things, a lot of different advanced technologies that can really be game changing for your business model. And because software vendors are investing so heavily in cloud solutions, it's important to really focus on and understand what it is you're trying to accomplish with your cloud migration. So if you're looking for just a lift and shift where you just move your current system to the cloud using those same capabilities you already had, that's okay, but you may wanna look at the cost of doing that because the cost benefit may not be there because a lot of the real benefit comes from these new capabilities that cloud offerings provide. So if you're looking for a true digital transformation where you're not just automating what you have, not just doing a lift and shift, but you're moving to more advanced business models and advanced technical capabilities, then you wanna make sure that your strategy and plan reflects that. And so that's the key first step here is to make sure you understand the difference between a more incremental lift and shift and a more transformative digital transformation and make sure that your overall cloud migration strategy is aligned with that overall approach. One of the key benefits of cloud systems today is the advanced business intelligence and analytics that they provide. And part of this is because you've got centralized data and centralized applications in the cloud, and it makes it a bit easier in many cases to access that data and consolidate that data. However, many organizations don't take advantage of these analytical and BI capabilities. And part of it is because they don't set a clear vision of what it is they want to get out of their cloud system in terms of BI, analytics, reporting, et cetera. So as part of your cloud migration strategy, you wanna make sure you have a clear vision up front of what it is you hope and expect to get out of your cloud migration in terms of your BI, your reporting, analytical capabilities, et cetera. Just as BI and analytics is a core capability of cloud systems that many organizations fail to take advantage of, same is true for architecture and integration. Many of today's cloud systems are focused on creating a platform for organizations to integrate to other systems. So if you've got legacy systems that are gonna remain on premise, or if you've got regulatory systems that you have to continue to use, these are great opportunities for you to use the cloud to tie the core cloud technologies to other systems that you might wanna to integrate to. And so having a clear vision and understanding and a clear strategy and plan for getting the data to your cloud system and ensuring that you've got the right integration among different systems is critical to being successful in your cloud migration. 
In addition, if you truly want to take advantage of machine learning and AI and some of these other advanced capabilities that cloud systems provide, you need to make sure that you have that integration and access to data because those new technologies don't work very well without good data, good integration to other systems. So when you look at your cloud migration strategy, you want to take this into account and recognize that it might take you a little bit extra time. It might increase your cost and time frame to be able to integrate data, integrate other systems, and to be able to take advantage of some of these more advanced capabilities of cloud systems. Change management is a critical component of any sort of digital transformation, but it's even more important with cloud migrations. And on one hand, some might argue, well, change management's actually a little bit easier because cloud systems are easier to use, has a better user interface and other criteria like that. And some of that is true, but those advantages from a change management perspective are actually outweighed by some of the challenges of cloud migration. So let me give you one example of how cloud technologies have a bigger impact on people and reinforce the need for change management. With cloud technologies, generally speaking, there's less flexibility in terms of what you can do with the software. With your old on-premise systems, you're always able to customize it, configure it however you want, because you could do whatever you want with it, you own it. With cloud systems, you don't necessarily own the software because it's hosted in the cloud, especially if you're looking at a multi-tenant SaaS or software as a service solution. So in general, generally speaking, cloud solutions are less flexible, which means you're putting more pressure to change your people in your processes versus changing the technology because you simply can't change the technology in the same way you could change on-premise solutions. So this is probably the biggest reason why there's so much pressure on change management within cloud migrations. And so as you think about your cloud migration, you just wanna make sure you resist that temptation to fall into the common myth, the incorrect myth for that matter, that cloud systems are easier from a change management perspective because it's actually the opposite. It's harder to adopt for many organizations to these new systems for the reasons I mentioned. So make sure you have a clear and effective organizational change strategy that addresses some of the resistance to change and some of the organizational challenges you're going to experience as part of that migration. Now, I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail of what your change strategy should look like and what some of the best practices are here, but if you wanna learn more about change management, I encourage you to download our guide to change management. It's a report that goes through a lot of best practices around change management. It gives you a framework for how you should deploy change management for cloud migrations. And I've included a link to that below, so be sure to check that out as well. Perhaps the dirtiest little secret within cloud migrations is that cloud solutions in general are going to cost you more in the long term. And a lot of organizations, especially those that sell software, will argue this point. They'll say, no, absolutely not. Cloud systems save you money because you don't need the infrastructure. You don't have the maintenance of the software, et cetera. And yes, you do save a little bit of money in those areas I mentioned, but the cost of the cloud solutions generally dwarf the savings that you get. And this is especially true when you look five to seven years out on the horizon. The first two or three years, yes, you're gonna save money, your annual operating costs are gonna be lower. You've avoided some of those big upfront capital investments that you had with your old on-premise systems. So in the first few years, yes, your cloud system is gonna cost you less. But at some point, much like leasing a car, you're gonna find that the ongoing costs that go into perpetuity are escalating over time and they're actually gonna dwarf the savings that you got from the things I mentioned before. So this is a big risk with cloud migrations. And so as part of your negotiation strategy, you need to make sure that you fully understand what the total cost of ownership is and also where those hidden escalators and kickers are in your contract. Because software vendors, in my opinion, have created an uneven playing field. They have more leverage here because they own your data. They own your applications and their long-term contracts that they've locked you into oftentimes have provisions for increased cost over time. I can tell you one thing for certain is that the cost will not go down. If anything, they're going to go up and you'd be lucky if they only go up by a small percentage. So as you think about your organization, as you grow, you increase volumes, you increase your data needs, you add more users, you add more modules, all that stuff's going to increase your cost over time. And so this is something you want to be aware of and negotiate and plan for early in your digital transformation. So the last thing to think about it as it relates to your cloud digital transformation is to understand the managed services environment that you're getting yourself into and negotiating the best possible arrangement for the managed services. And this includes not only costs, which I just mentioned, but it also includes ensuring that you have the right service level agreements, the right guarantees of performance uptime, the right cybersecurity protocols in place, 
the things that you're outsourcing and paying for, you want to make sure you're getting the results that you expect. This is that whole managed services model that the cloud providers offer. And so when you're migrating your applications to the cloud, you're not just moving the software to the cloud. You have now an external party that's managing your infrastructure, managing cybersecurity, managing your data, all that stuff. And you just want to make sure that you have clear parameters, KPIs, and service level agreements for how you manage that service provider and that you're holding them accountable for ensuring that you're actually getting an improvement over your on-premise infrastructure that you might have today. So these are some of the things you should think about as you develop your cloud migration strategy. And for more information and more best practices on how to manage your cloud or general digital transformation, I encourage you to download our annual digital transformation report, which covers a number of best practices around how to make your digital transformation more successful. And we've also provided independent reviews and rankings of the different cloud providers in the marketplace. So I encourage you to check that out with the links I've included below in the description. I've also included a number of other resources that are meant to help you through your digital transformation. So I encourage you to check that out below as well. So I hope you found this information useful and hope you have a great day.